G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for a bit of a trade update, I guess, with the trade period looming in a couple of weeks. Obviously, we've still got the grand final to go through first, but the trade period and trade talk always fascinated me a little bit, and uh, you guys seem to be responding to it as well, so I thought I'd do a bit of a video on it today. The first story I kind of wanted to cover is a bit of an Eagles one, and uh, I try to avoid making too much Eagles content on this channel, but I looked at it and I've made like 35 videos in the last 28 days, so I'm going to allow myself a few minutes to talk about a pretty Eagles focused topic first. So like a few other clubs, the Eagles are sort of jostling a bit of a salary cap issue at the moment um, and also just trying to work out how many list spots we're going to have for the draft and we still, in fact I think we're behind most clubs in terms of the delistings that we've made. We've been very very slow at it for some reason. The Eagles still don't actually have confirmation that JK, Hearn and Redden are all playing on. I think they are but it hasn't actually been confirmed with a contract yet as far as I'm aware. Now, it seemed for a little while that Jared Brander leaving the club, former first-round draft pick back from 2017, the last time we took a first-round draft pick, actually. It's been obvious that he's going to be leaving the club for a little while now, but we're waiting to see, you know, what exactly was going on. Heard a few links to Geelong and Hawthorne, but yesterday, apparently, Trevor Nisbet has come out and said that he was not offered a contract for next year, and the Eagles are going to decide after the trade period what to do with Branda if he doesn't get a trade. Now, I found this particular statement a little bit baffling from Nisbet. Now, Branda hasn't set the world on fire. He's been played in a few different positions, pretty much everywhere except key forward for which he was drafted. Tried in different parts of the ground to varying success. Started to build up a little bit of momentum as a wingman, then he got injured and didn't find his way back into the side. But either way, first round draft pick, out of contract, probably not going to get too much on the trade table. Realistically, I think the Best case scenario we could push for is probably, yeah, maybe a third rounder or an upgrade to a second, and that's probably pushing what is realistic, to be honest. But the effect of Nisbet's comments saying, you know, they, they haven't offered him a contract, he's essentially delisted. For me, I am questioning that strategy. Why would you come out and basically show your poker hand halfway through the game? <laughs> You know, it kind of makes more sense to be like, oh, you know, yes, Jared's a required player and we're not going to be letting him go easily. But instead, we're like, you know what, we'll see if he gets traded. And if not, he's going to head to the draft. I know the Eagles have a reputation for being relatively weak traders, pretty much over trading for players, in particular Tim Kelly in the last few years. But that just, it just baffled me. It just baffled me. And maybe we are talking about the difference between pick 35 and pick 65 or even pick 45 and 65 I don't know but it just seems like there's a lack of thought going into this offseason from the Eagles reading between the lines a little bit it does kind of seem like Jared Brand has probably packed the shits with West Coast and you can understand why for a player that wants to be a key position player going forward he's stuck behind Kennedy Oscar Allen Darling and even Jake Waterman's probably ahead of him at this point in time you know the first half of the year he played plenty pretty much played him every time he was fit and in the second half of the year barely played him at all that was partly due to injury, but I did remark in the final round of the season, we had about seven outs and he was still only a late in for that game. So I think the decision to trade Brandon was probably made a while ago, but it just, it just stinks of a club that isn't really putting a lot of thought into the way they negotiate deals. It's a blow in the scheme of things for the Eagles because, like I said, he was the last first round draft pick we took four years ago. And in a landscape where you've traded three years in a row worth of first rounders out of the club, it is a blow that he is now leaving the club and we're going to get nothing for him. To compound that further, the first rounder we took the year before that, Dan Venables, also retired this year. I think if you'd asked, uh, certainly myself, but a few Eagles fans, who were the best young prospects or at least most talented on the list outside the best 22 this year? I would have said probably Jared Brander, Daniel Venables, and Jared Cameron. And Jared Cameron's another player who is, I think he's quit the Eagles. So I'm not too sure of the details around that, but he is not going to be playing with the club next year. So without rambling on that too much, it's just a bit of frustration. I feel like this trade period is starting to get a little bit out of control for the Eagles. And again, I know from an outsider's perspective, it doesn't look like Jared Brand is that good, but like I said, never actually been played in his correct position. I think back to the 2017 draft where the Eagles clearly needed to add a midfielder to their list. And we plucked Jared Brander because supposedly he was by far and away the best available talent in the draft. We expect him to go higher. So to then spend the next four years not playing him in the position we drafted him for and then to let him walk out of the club with accepting basically nothing in return. I just think the Eagles botched it. That's just really poor management there. And uh, yeah, it's pretty disappointing. And I know you can't play hindsight hero too much with this, but you, you kind of think 
the drafting of Brander set off this chain reaction that essentially has led us to the difficult position we're in now. Maybe I'm clutching at straws a little bit here, but say we take Allen with our first pick in 2017. That leaves our second pick 21 all open to take Tim Kelly. If we do that, we don't trade two years worth of draft picks out of the club. We're probably not also spending so much on him, you know, a million dollars a year or whatever that he kind of inflated it with a really, really strong performance at Geelong, which he probably wouldn't have had at West Coast had he been drafted by us in the first place. Further that, it also means the Eagles can't trade anyone in because of the tight salary cap we've got at the moment. Jordan Clark is a player I'll touch on now who, it seems, is more and more likely to request a trade back home to Perth, likely to join Fremantle, and the Eagles can't even really be in the race because they literally don't have $2 to rub together to offer anyone a contract at this stage. But the Jordan Clark talk is not going away, and I think he would be a fairly astute pickup for Fremantle. I don't think he's a world beater by any stretch, but a good young player right in the sort of age bracket that Fremantle will be looking for. In terms of other trade news, apparently Jeremy Finlayson has been seen doing a medical at Port Adelaide, and Kane Corns was pretty outspoken on this, and to be fair, he's outspoken about a lot of different things, and while I think you should be selective with what kind of Kane Corns opinions you listen to, I think in terms of an internal opinion on what Port Adelaide need and don't need, he's a fairly reliable source, and he seems to think that the power really, really don't need Finlayson, and I must admit, that was kind of my reaction too. Korn says he's really the last player that they need. Bot Adelaide does not need another inconsistent forward who goes missing in big games. I mean, that's a bit of a shot. I was more coming it from the angle that they've got Charlie Dixon, Mitch Georgiatis, and Todd Marshall, and it pretty much means one of them is going to be forced out of the team. Most likely Todd Marshall, in my opinion. The thing about Finlayson is that he's a really good, reliable avenue to goals. Yes, he's not going to be a game-breaking sort of key forward, power forward that you know Charlie Dixon is, but he's a reliable producer of goals, and I think he's going to be a good pickup for him whoever he plays for. That being said, I don't know if it's the best move for the power when you've got, I'd imagine they'd be somewhat close of the salary cap. I think most clubs are somewhat close to the salary cap at the moment, but being a fairly good team with a few young players about to, I'd assume, get bigger contracts in the near future, it's something they need to be conscious of. Corn suggests maybe they want to play Finlayson back, but again, I feel like there are cheaper options to Finlayson if you want someone sort of playing as a makeshift defender. Finlayson still contracted for another two seasons after this one, but it's been reported that he's apparently weighing up a move to South Australia for family reasons. I actually did not know that. I can imagine why he'd want to play for the power, but surely the Crows would be in a better position to land him. But Corns actually goes on to say something interesting for once. He says, unless and every year you hear some murmurs about Charlie Dixon perhaps wanting to go back to Gold Coast. That is pretty interesting. He says he's heard that, seems to come up every year, he's contracted. More or less, he's suggesting that this is a little bit of a contingency if Charlie Dixon is seriously considering a trade back to the Gold Coast Suns. This is an interesting one for me. Port fans, let me know in the comments what you think about a potentially acquiring Finn Lason. What are your thoughts on Todd Marshall? I think it just kind of creates a selection headache and it may cost them a Todd Marshall on their list in a couple of years' time. There's been a couple of other confirmed trades or at least free agency moves rather, not trades. We've got Mabio Chol has joined the Gold Coast Suns from Richmond as a free agent, I believe. Interestingly, he qualifies as a free agent because he was formally delisted by Richmond. Didn't actually know that was a rule, but it does make sense to me. So that is a great signing for the Suns. Anytime they can land a good Victorian-based talent, signing him on a long-term deal, I think that is good for the stability of their club going forward. And, you know, he's a pretty handy talent as well. Played a bit in the ruck and did pretty well this year. And Jared Witts will be returning from an ACL, but I think he can use a little bit of support. And he certainly adds a point of difference as, you know, a really athletic type rock. Turns out he is a Queenslander originally as well, which surprised me. He was part of the Brisbane Lions Academy a few years ago and Richmond outbitted him. So bit of a blow for the Tigers, but in good news for them, they have acquired Robbie Tarrant from North Melbourne. Makes sense to me. I was saying a couple of days ago that it might be on the market for a key position back, at least a stopgap solution with, you know, Broad and Bolter, those guys having injury issues. Richmond obviously, you know, gearing up for the here and now. They want to win another flag in 2022. Makes sense for them to go for the experienced veteran option and Tarrant was a very very good player at least a couple of years ago still going to be a handy player this year but it's a blow for North Melbourne but in the scheme of things they are a young developing list and he probably wasn't going to be part of the next finals push anyway. Just rounding out some of the new trade news you got Angus Brayshaw has come out and firmly denied that he is going to join Fremantle this rumor does come up every now and then for some reason obviously because of his brother Andrew at Fremantle but again for the second time in a couple of years that I can remember he's laughed off suggestions that he's leaving Melbourne and Fremantle 
frankly, why would you? Why would you go play in Perth where you're not from just to join your brother when your team is potentially on the verge of a great dynasty? Obviously, Brayshaw's name was sort of thrown in the hat, you know, around trades for Adam Chera joining the Melbourne Footy Club, and I'm still at a bit of a loss to see how, you know, Chera makes his way to the Demons. I guess all of that will be revealed in due course, but I think we're going to safely rule out Angus Brayshaw or Luke Jackson being part of that deal. Anyway, guys, that is my trade update on the current situation at the moment, as well as a little bit of a sulky rant on where the West Coast Eagles are at. Let us know in the comments what you think about all the rumors discussed here any other rumors that you've heard as always i invite you to consider subscribing to the true footy youtube channel it's been a great period of growth i really appreciate all the support and everyone jumping on board like the video if you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one thanks guys